Welcome to the Trusted Computer Solutions podcast titled Lockdown Heartburn, Windows to Linux Migration. My name is Evan Wiesel, and in this episode I will interview Jamie Adams, a principal systems engineer with over 22 years experience designing, developing, deploying, and managing highly available large-scale mission critical systems, including unclassified, classified, and MLS systems. Today's subject is, your organization has made the decision to migrate from Windows to Linux. Now what? This podcast discussion will focus on the surprises that can crop up once an organization has decided to do a migration and how to effectively address them. Good morning, Jamie. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for having me this morning. Well, great. Well, let's start off discussing security policy. In a recent blog post, you stated that every organization should have a security policy, and if you don't, shame on you. I know you can take this in many, uh, in many directions, but at a very high level, what things should an organization build into their security policy? It's a great question, you know, and I talked, I did talk about it in great detail in the uh, blog post. But you know, and one of the key points out of that post was that I wanted to emphasize to people: don't let your security policy be driven by the technology that you've that you've chosen. And what I mean by this is, lots of people will download. Um, how-tos, recipes, and all these little tidbits on how to securely configure their systems, and then they'll go and modify or even create a security policy from that. And you know that's really the wrong way to go, especially if you're going from Windows to Linux or another environment, because you've essentially chosen specific controls for the particular OS, which necessarily translates to another. And so you need to have a policy that's broad enough to handle all kinds of various threats and expect the unexpected. Um, you know, for example, you should have a policy that generically says, I'm going to protect against all removable devices, uh, USB storage devices in particular. And the policy itself should not be detailed as to how to specifically do it in each OS, but as a general policy. And the other thing is you need to be able to handle uh, dynamic changes to the guidelines and threats. And so you need to have an effective change management process and all these other surrounding processes that allow you to be stringent enough from a change management standpoint, but also flexible enough to handle new threats. So don't think the security policy is an island by itself, but all those other processes and procedures around it are really essential to having a fluid um, operations. Okay, great. Great insight, Jamie. Um, now, in this day and age, every organization obviously needs to have a security policy in place. So let's say your organization does have a security policy in place. My next question is, how does an organization enforce this policy once a migration occurs, and is there a common denominator across Windows and Linux operating systems? It's a great question. You know, and I alluded to that in my previous answer, but um, you know, I mentioned something about high-level policies, and that you have password complexity rules or password aging rules. You know, those are uh, standard access control mechanisms that are um, you know, across all operating systems. So make sure the policy states those kinds of things. And in a trusted facility manual or any specific ones for OSs, you give guidelines on how to configure that OS to support that policy. Again, policies are high level. Secondly, make sure that you have the right people that can interpret the policy into technical controls. Those technical controls being, I just mentioned, security uh, password lengths and complexities, well, the technical controls to enforce that are just that, how to do it in a particular OS. So in addition, you need to have a process or an ability to report back to the main company stakeholders. You must be able to provide a generic kind of security report, you know, both in a strategic and a tactical um, sense. You know, you've got your middle managers and sysadmins, things that need to take on a short-term basis. And from a strategic standpoint, from your management point of view, they need to know what the um, long-term security posture is and what it's, what it's going to be, something that's going to be measurable. And if you do anything with reporting, the most important thing you need to do is to have an inventory. If you don't know what machines you have or systems you have out there, you can't very well lock them down. So inventorying and asset management is really, really critical. Okay. Uh, so my final question, um, and uh, one to round out the full life cycle from policy to enforcement and now to maintaining your security posture, is how can a patch, uh, a patch management system interplay with keeping your security policy enforced? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and again, I'm a big proponent of patching, of course. Now, I want to be a little bit more generic instead of patch management system, just the patch management process in general. Um, there's a love-hate relationship with patch management. People are reluctant to apply patches because they're going to break 
potentially break existing functioning systems. Um, at the same time, there's this risk of if you don't patch, what vulnerabilities are you exposed to? So some sysadmins almost view it as like an insurance policy. Well, we haven't been hacked or broken into a vulnerability, so I'm not really sure if I want to go ahead and invest in a, you know, applying the patches now. So in addition to that, the patch management can impact your security policy simply because it introduces change. Now, this change could, one, from an operational standpoint, affect the reliability. As I just said, you've got to have time to amply test all of the uh, patches that you've applied. Has it affected the system? Secondly, when you apply these patches, um, it may loosen previously tightened access controls or change key settings that have been previously set. Um, you know, and this is just part of applying patches. Um, you know, they're putting it back to some of the defaults. So you've got to make sure that, one, did the fat patch itself break something internally, or did the something adjacent to it, because of the way permissions have changed or done something else, did it affect something else? But consistently checking on the security policy following the patch application is really critical. So, you know, followed by you know hardening, rehardening the systems, hardening the systems, and then when you do apply the patch, you need to re absolutely know what that patch changed on your system from access controls to contents of files, et cetera, and you need to be able to have the ability to, to manage and monitor that drift. And you need to be able to provide evidence that this is the only things that I've changed, and I mentioned change management process earlier, so that this evidence should be provided as support to that change management process. Very, very important for everyone to know exactly what they're putting on their systems. Well, great, Jamie. That, that's the, that was my last question, and, uh, and we really appreciate you calling in this morning and sharing your thoughts on what gives sysadmins heartburn when, when an organization elects to migrate uh, from Windows to Linux and, and how to be best prepared uh, to make it through the process. Um, one of the things you can do is check out this podcast at www.trustedcs.com or Jamie uh, writes a technical blog which can be found at um, uh, http colon backslash backslash tcs dash security dash blanket dot blogspot dot com backslash. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter. Uh, our handle is at trustedcs. And finally, uh, if you're interested in meeting Jamie in person and other executives from Trusted Computer Solutions, we will be participating at the LISA conference next month in San Jose, November 9 through 12. Thanks very much. Thank you. Please stand by.